for those of you that are, you know, I just want the machine to test alkalinity, the machine is going to come in with a default. Mm -hmm. So the default is going to be there. It's going to make the choice for you. And then you set it up and everything is set. But if you're that person that has the knowledge and wants to be a little more, a little more micromanage the device, mm -hmm. then you get to, you, you have the option of choosing. Yeah. All right, so Dave, let's talk about the other reason why our X10 has taken a little bit of a delay, and it's because of alkalinity. Alkalinity. And, alkalinity. Yes, another. And, and you know, we've, we've done so much research on alkalinity, and we know a fair amount of it, and it's mainly because from firsthand experience. I yep. mean, we started, we distributed the KHG, the yep. KH Guardian. Then we went and distributed the Alcatronic from Hocustronic, yep. and then we distributed the Camor. Correct. The KH Care. So there's three, yep. three devices that we've we've done support. We've done we we worked we work with, the, with manufacturers. the manufacturers. You know, so we got to the beauty about being the last one is that you get to learn from everybody <laughs> that went ahead, you know, yep. before you. So let's talk about alkalinity and why alkalinity testing is going to be different with the X10. The biggest reason with what we're doing is, is we're gonna give you different options or methods in which to compare your test against. And what are, what are those? So what happens is uh, alkalinity testing, especially when it comes to titration based on pH, is that all you're doing is grabbing a sample of water mm -hmm. and then you're adding acid until the, water, the sample water drops to a particular pH point. Mm -hmm. And at that pH point, then you do a, you, you apply a, a mathematical formula to figure out alkalinity. The problem is, what is the pH endpoint? Mm. And is there a standard? And we know there's not a standard. And the reality is that there isn't. Yeah. There are tests out there. Uh, a well-known uh, chemist in the, in the hobby has a DIY method. And his endpoint is when the sample reaches 4.5. Mm -hmm. But then there's also uh, hand titration companies out there yep. that they're actually using 4.2. Mm -hmm. So then you, in order to get from 4.5 to 4.2, you have to add more acid. Yep. And the more acid you add, the it higher did. the alkalinity. Yep. So you have a sample of water, the same sample of water, and depending on which method or which endpoint you choose, you can have high alkalinity or mm -hmm. you can have a little bit lower alkalinity. If you test, when and you test until the sample reaches 4.2, your alkalinity is going to be up here. Yeah. And if you test when the alkalinity, when the when the pH sample is at 4.5, then it's going to be down here. And then to make matters a little more complicated, then there is the EPA the method EPA. by the you know the EPA, yeah. and the EPA uses a method developed by the University of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And what it does is what they're doing is they bring the sample, they measure how much reagent it takes to bring the water down to 4.5 and then they write that down. And then they continue to bring that water down to 4.2, and then they write that down. And then they subtract what it takes from 4.5 to 4.2 from 4.5. Mm -hmm. So in essence, it's even lower oh. because you're subtracting. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're, you get to 4.5 and now you're subtracting from 4.5, therefore the same water sample but test tested with the EPA method gives you an alkalinity that's even lower. So which one's correct? <laughs> that's the thing tested. about it is that we've done research yeah. and there's no standard right. out there. There's no entity that says you must use 4.5 end, endpoint or 4.2 endpoint, which is quite interesting because mm. it's not wrong. Right. It's not wrong. But the interesting thing about it is that, is that it explains why online we see a lot of people mm -hmm. say that, hey, you know, I'm, I tested with this hand titration, yeah. whatever hand titration mm -hmm. you want, you can, you can, you know, insert yeah. manufacturer name. Yeah. And then I'm testing it against my machine mm -hmm. and they're not matching. Yeah. And the reason why is because both devices are using a different endpoint method. Mm -hmm. So they're never going to match. Incredible. They, it, it, you know, and that's really. the thing. It's like, and <clears throat> at Hydro's, we were, cracking our heads, <laughs> trying to make it match. It's like, it's yep. not matching, yep. it's not matching. And then we're like, no, stop, stop. You know, it's, it's better to educate people mm -hmm. 
be transparent and say, here, this is what's happening. Here are the cards. Yep. And then you choose what you want. If you feel that 4.5 is a better endpoint, yep. then you use 4.5 or 4.2. Or if you want the, you know, if you're a public aquarium, you're more likely to use the EPA method. Yeah. You know, whichever yeah. you want. It doesn't, it doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. And let's also keep in mind, Carlos, if somebody wants to use that trusty hand method, you know, via test kit, mm -hmm. we have an offset. That's they absolutely. Wanna, they want that as their basis to trust. Mm -hmm. They can offset plus or minus and set that to the app. Exactly. And that'll be the reading to match. So, so you're going to have different methods that you can choose from. Mm -hmm. If you know what the method that your handy reference yep. uh, test kit is doing, then you choose that method. Mm -hmm. And if you need further tweaking, then you use the offset to just fine tune a little bit yep. instead of just, instead of sometimes having to create a big offset, which doesn't really give you an accurate reading. Yeah. You know, so we want you to pick the right method and then select that. Now, for those of you that are, you know, I just want the machine to test alkalinity, the machine is going to come in with a default. Mm -hmm. So the default is going to be there. It's going to make the choice for you. And then you set it up and everything is set. But if you're that person that has the knowledge and wants to be a little more, a little more micromanage the device, mm -hmm. then you get to, you, you have the option of choosing. Yeah. And that's what we wanted to have. That's what we wanted to do and wanted to make sure that people were educated that there's a reason why the test kits are not matching. And I don't understand why manufacturers don't just say that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, when you're talking about alkalinity, it's such a powerful measurement uh, parameter in our aquariums. It, it gives such a reflection but I, of what's going on. But I think more importantly, we're looking for stability. Okay. We're looking for a number that's not going to have these big dips and valleys. We're looking to try and stabilize. And when we're able to stabilize that number, we also stabilize calcium and magnesium fall in line. And then we're looking at, you know, success. Yeah. I mean, I remember the old days when you asked somebody, it's like, what's your alkalinity? And somebody would say nine. Yeah. And it's like, oh, so, Wait, but it's so nine it never moves. moves. <laughs> it never moves. It's nine. And I think everybody, now that the machines, the machines have been out for years, mm. starting with the KHG and so forth. I think people have come to the realization that your alkalinity goes up at nighttime and it goes down during the day because yep. of the demand. The demand. the demand. So it's a range that you're looking for. You're not looking for nine. You're looking for eight and three quarters to nine and a quarter. Yeah. Something like that. So what you're saying also is that, is that you, stability is key. Stability is key, Carlos, because as these corals start to, to take place, you can almost monitor the consumption going up daily. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're able to, to see that uh, the alkalinity is falling, you know you need to take cor corrective measures mm -hmm. via more CO2 on a calcium reactor or more of your two-part, three-part solution. So what you're saying also is that doesn't matter if it's eight, doesn't mm -hmm. matter if it's nine, nope. doesn't matter if it's seven, as long as next month yeah. is still so eight, eight. Yeah. or it's still the, the same range. Yeah. So you with the tighter the range, the better. Whether mm -hmm. the range is up here, whether here or here, right. it doesn't matter. So whether you choose the 4.2 endpoint method mm -hmm. or you use the 4.5 endpoint method or use the EPA method, it doesn't matter. Right. As long as just stick to one yep. and then don't go and start changing the methods to, to, to match the reference. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is intended. Right. This is intended to give you just choose one and stick to that one. Yep. And if you do, again, you're not looking, you're not, we're not chasing numbers. Mm -hmm. You're chasing a range. Yeah. You're looking for a range and that's going to give you the stability. And the one thing about the stability also, it's almost like your blood pressure. Mm. If your blood pressure is okay, then likely every, you're a healthy person. Yeah. But if your blood pressure starts to go up and down, then there's something going on. Mm. Same thing with a tank. If your alkalinity is stable, your calcium and your magnesium are gonna be just They're fine. They're right there. They're right there. I, I tell you, that's probably one of the least things I, I, I test in my aquarium is calcium, magnesium, because I know if that alkalinity number's there, those two others are right behind. They're right behind. falling in where they should be. I probably test like once a month. Mm -hmm. And if you, anybody, you know, I know people are out there, oh, I test every day, I test six times a day or whatever it is, that's fine. But if you do a survey, yeah. just ask online, how many people actually test, test 
magnesium and calcium. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you, I haven't tested it in a while. Yep. If you ask any farmers, any of the big farmers right. out there, any of the big aquaculture, any of the big companies that sell frags, mm -hmm. you ask them about alkalinity, they'll tell you that right away. Oh, yeah. But you ask them about calcium and magnesium, they'd be like, uh, yeah. I haven't tested that in a while. Yeah. I mean, if my alkalinity is fine, mm -hmm. then that's fine. Yeah. So, you know, listen to those farmers. Don't listen to the manufacturers telling mm -hmm. you to test you know, three, four times a day, magnesium and calcium, you, you know, at that point, you're just wasting money yep. on, on, re on, on reagents. Yeah, exactly. So alkalinity is pretty much kind of like the heartbeat. Alkalinity is the, the blood pressure. Yep. If alkalinity is fine, most likely everything else is okay. Yep. And just look at your tank. Yeah, that's the main thing. Start of your tank. I look mean, at the corals. I mean, that is they'll a, tell you what's going on. That is a lost art yeah. that I think it, it's gone nowadays. Everybody's so relying on a controller and machines mm -hmm. that at the, you forget that it's just look at the tank yeah. and, and look at the corals. You know, are the Montiporus okay? Are the Gondiporus okay? Is your, if you have Xenia, is the Xenia mm -hmm. pulsing? Yeah. That'll tell you. pH is low. Montiporus are not good. That means a, a, an alkalinity swing. Mm -hmm. There's so many things. You know, talk to the old reefers that have been around for 20 plus years and they'll tell you back in the day, mm -hmm. you had to read your tank, yeah. you know, but there's nothing wrong with making it easier. I yeah. mean, the, the one thing about today is that the controllers, hydros, and, and it's the research, they have allowed you to enjoy the tank and, and increase success, success rate, <laughs> success rate, you know, so yeah. that everybody's attainable. That, so you're not, you know, it's like, I can have a tank that looks like this as mm -hmm. well, just like anybody else. Yeah. You know, you know that that's one of the biggest things in our in our industry or hobby is is people exit after 18 months on average. Mm -hmm. And what's the number one reason? Lack of success. Exactly. They get aggravated, throw up their hands, get rid of it. This is X10. It's another tool to help you have success, like our friend Richard he is doing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So with that, thanks, Dave, yeah, as always. Great. I mean, it's always good to see yeah, you here. And like, yeah. We're not on Zoom or right. doing anything. So um, uh, I'm not going to ask you what the weather is in New Orleans yeah. because I don't want to know. No, that's, you that's, know? That's, <laughs> you're probably happy that you're in L.A. I am. Well, thank you, everybody, for thank watching. You. And, um, you know, we'll see you next time.